welcome to Therapist Spotlight. Hello everybody, welcome to Therapist Spotlight, the podcast where we showcase our wonderful ANTA members to the wider community to help bring some more awareness to natural health and what our wonderful members are doing. I'm your host, Joshua Brooks, and we're here with the lovely Jessica Cox today. Jessica is a clinical nutritionist and I believe specializes in gut health. So Jessica, how are you going? Hello, thank you for having me. And yes, I'm doing very well, thank you. Yep. So first inaugural question, what got you into natural medicine? What do you love about it? Oh, so many things. So I actually come from a, a background initially that wasn't to do with uh, natural medicine or nutrition. So I actually came to my studies at a bit of a later date. Initially, um, when I first left school and my studies, I went into photography actually and did a Bachelor of um, Visual Arts in Photography and was in the design industry. So completely removed. In wow. saying that, I did also have this underlying passion constantly for food. It was always something that was there. I grew up um, on a farm. We had a lot of our own produce. So it was always ticking away and I had a love for mm. it, but it wasn't something at that point that was driving me. Um, well, what, what happened, um, like I'm sure a lot of people can relate to, is that as I got into my sort of early 20s, mid 20s, um, I started to have some health issues. Um, the industry that I was working in was some pretty hectic hours um, all, all over the place, lots of late nights, being on the road, um, stopping at servos to eat food, that sort yep. of stuff. So <laughs> essentially my health started to suffer. Um, digestively was the main thing for me and some hormone issues that were going on. Um, so I just started trying to work a little bit with that with health professionals firstly from like a medical model and wasn't really getting anywhere mm. um, and then I started to explore the nutrition space more so on my own so um, it was a while ago so I would actually more so go to the library and sit on the floor with books and read books <laughs> actual in those books, days. Wow. Actual books. <laughs> crazy and just yeah totally immersing myself with all of that and I just found that as I made little changes in my life, it helped me feel a little bit better. Mm. Um, fate then kind of came into the picture. So I moved up to Brisbane and I was walking to this pool that I was swimming at every day. And I was actually walking past Endeavour every day, then a different name. Um, and I would go into the cafe and get some food and those sorts of things. And I'd pick up a brochure and... I just started reading about the course and I thought, I wonder if I just do this for six months part time and still do what I'm doing on the side and I'll, I'll just see, I'll just whet my appetite. So I decided to do that, just did like some foundational um, subjects to start and mm -hmm. Six months later, I was hooked. I was like a nutrition junkie. <laughs> it was yep. like I, I flipped it completely. I went full time into my studies um, and just went part time with my work. And that was it for me. Like it was it was like a light that was lit up. Essentially, mm. it was like everything that had been going on with my own health and my passion for wanting to help myself but also this growing love of food that had been on the side it just all came together from there so yeah that's sort of the back history there well so it's such a, like the thing about food is it's so important for cultural like fabric and societal fabric isn't it like yeah. wherever you go somewhere it's like yeah what do you cook and making meals for people it seems to be embedded in so many different cultures yeah. you know traditional foods and all that kind of stuff yeah so such a such a big driver be between us like as yeah. humans i think yeah massive massive and i definitely was responding to that over my own years just from like that um way of that food brings people together like i, mm. I did love that with food but i definitely was also very inspired by the concept of food healing the body yeah. um and i don't know it's really weird like i have been asked that recently in some interviews i've i've done and where that came from and i'm like I actually don't know it's like mm. just some again like it feels like some little fire that's in me and this like crazy interest in how food 
heals us and what it can do for us. Like I, you know, obviously I won't bore you with details, but I can remember being very, very young and um, mm. being influenced by books that I would read at, at crazy young ages that were about food and having magical mm. powers. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's something extra there that I think, again, was just ignited by this this field. So how does that then translate into your practice? Like, say, say I came in for a consultation with you. What sort of stuff do you do with your clients? Like, how, how do you approach them? Mm -hmm. What do you talk to them about? Like, are, are you a big supplement sort of person with the nutrition to try and figure out different, mm -hmm. different difficulties and differences? Or do you try to yeah. do more that food lifestyle change? Mm. Yeah. What? How, how do you how do you approach that sorts of stuff? So at the JCN clinic, which is the clinic um, that I own and direct in Brisbane, mm -hmm. we are very very passionate about using food first and foremost. Yep. So with our clients, we will always go through their dietary intake very comprehensively, mm -hmm. and then. With our treatment protocols we give to our clients, they are very comprehensive as far as the food level. So I, I say that to people and then when they actually see our treatment protocols, they're like, oh, oh, okay, that's <laughs> that's pretty intense. But for us as nutritionists and with such a passion for how important food is, it's really mm -hmm. vital that our clients are given a really concrete plan as far as here's three to four breakfast options, how to make them, what to use, here's lunch, dinner, snacks, like that. Mm -hmm. That to, to me and to us is what I always say is foundational. So that will always be our number one. Then from there, absolutely supplements will pay, play a role. Um, mm -hmm. We Because we do tend to specialise in more chronic gut issues, um, supplements absolutely end up coming in and playing a role, but they will be an adjunct to treatment. Um, food will always be first, and mm -hmm. particularly if someone comes in to us and we can see there's so much that needs to be done with that foundation first with food, we'll always ask them to spend at least three to four weeks making those changes before we would dive into, say, functional testing or yeah, supplements. Okay. It's just like I always say to my clients, like, we've got to get your foundations right, like build the good structure of the house. Let's not window mm -hmm. dress with some supplements at this point. Let's get the foundations correct. Yeah, for sure. And so how do you approach that diet with different people? Because obviously in the dietary mm -hmm. space at the moment, you know, you've got paleo, you've got carnivore, you've got plant-based, you've yeah. got all of these different you know, people's ideas and ideologies being thrown at you. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you sort of navigate that in terms of what clients come yeah. in and, and, yeah, work through that kind of stuff that seems to be crazy at the moment? Yeah, it is. Look, it's very, we, it's still very individualised. So first <laughs> I would, would always be respectful. I would always be respectful of someone's dietary choices with obviously things like vegetarian, vegan, yeah, those yeah. sorts of things. Um, however, realistically, we are always trying to look at the foundations of a healthy diet being a macronutrient balanced intake. Yep. So when I say that, that can be applied to obviously a lot of different dietary arms. So if mm -hmm. I have someone coming in who's vegan, I'm still going to make sure that they've got a whole food diverse diet, but it's also yep. macro balance. Make sure they understand they're getting enough protein and where that comes from, et cetera, fats, carbs, the same as I would that someone that came in the door and they were maybe more paleo in nature yep. um, or someone who was pescatarian, it would still be working with how do we still take these frameworks and structures and make that work for you. And then on top of that, of course, then comes things like intolerances and nutting that out with clients. Again, with the gut component, we yeah. do so much with chronic gut issues. It's then identifying do we need to now pull out certain foods at this point that you might be reacting to whether that is i always will use the example of like a primary reactant something that you're reacting to because you're intolerant to it or yep. something secondary as a reactant which is more about your microbiome and those bacteria reactions so do we need to look at a kind of more low fermentable or low fodmap type of approach so it's starting with that foundation and then continuing to individualize further yeah and so with the chronic gut stuff that you do see, what's your plan of attack? Do you, again, do you try and build the food first? So are you looking at like sauerkrauts, fermented foods, that sorts of stuff? Or 
uh, then probiotics or are you sort of probiotics first or trying to eliminate and just clean it up completely first and then looking at how mm. to get the dysbiosis? Like, well, what's that process look yeah. like for you guys? Oh, look, it's so different from person yeah. to person. But I would, if I had to generalise, I would say because of the chronic nature of our gut mm -hmm. issues that we tend to treat, it would be usually be more of a reduction first with the yeah. diet, like pulling out things that are at the moment problematic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And often, more often than not, it would be complemented with functional testing. So we're generally doing some form of like comprehensive stool testing, SIBO, an oat um, organic acid test, something yeah. to give us more information. And then mm -hmm. we're using that information to then dictate what we need to do with the diet further and then what supplements but generally it would be taking things out of the diet first yeah, that are problematic okay. but the funny thing about that is that most people don't eat a very diverse diet anyway so mm -hmm. even though they can come in to see you and you can and look at maybe more of a lower FODMAP approach, for instance, mm -hmm. um, but then you spend time with them showing them, okay, you can't, we don't want you to eat these foods right now, but here's a whole lot of other ideas that you can eat and how you can make different types of breakfast and use different grains and all these things you haven't even thought about. I find most of the time I end up having my clients eating more diverse yeah. because you're educating them as you go. So mm -hmm. yes, there's that pull out phase and we walk them through that as they improve but generally even within that phase i'd say like it's often surprising how much variety they end up eating but it it's lesser the fact that someone will come in with gut issues and we would just pop them on probiotics and a good gut soothing powder and then send them on their way and they're fixed like I'd yeah. love more of those clients. They'd be great. So that I, <laughs> <laughs> they don't come to the JCN clinic. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is sort of like, I find nutrition incredibly difficult because of how sort of, I guess, not closed-minded because I find people are quite open-minded, but they seem to get locked into certain diets quite um, specifically, right? Like, and sometimes they don't even think, like I know when I was younger, I look back at what I was eating and it's crazy. And I used to think I could out train a bad diet, right? Like I, yeah. it didn't matter to me or whatever. I can just do more, more pull-ups and it'll be fine and all that sorts of stuff. <laughs> right. Like, <Yeah. laughs> so, which you look back now and you're like, well, that's crazy. Like, what was I even thinking? But um, yeah. So like, how do you break through that kind of stuff or maybe the, the dogmatic or the entrainment or mm. you try and get around maybe, you know, maybe if someone yeah. needs to eat a little bit more meat or they need a bit more protein yeah. or, you know, like, how do you, how do you, like, because those are sometimes sensitive issues for people, right? Oh, yeah. And complaints and that. So, yeah, how yeah. do you sort of navigate through that that terrain? Look, I think it's it's education with your mm -hmm. client and spending time with them and explaining the why. Like, people are pretty smart and they they want to know. So, if you can if you can give them a really good logical reason as to why they need to maybe eat more protein or mm. maybe carbohydrates, like that could be a, a common one where it's like we actually need you to eat more of these carbohydrates and this is why we need, yeah. we, we can see this on your test result. You've got an undergrowth of these bacteria. We need to feed them with these types of carbohydrates yeah, or yeah. whatever it might be. Like don't, don't just tell them you have to do this, tell them why and the benefits as mm -hmm, to why. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes with certain types of styles of eating, it might be a bit of a negotiation. So um, sometimes with clients with the vegan space, which I'm mm -hmm. so appreciative of, like I, I get that sometimes it, you just have to work with it and there's no budge room. But I have had vegan clients who with chronic gut issues, we've made a, a, a deal that for the next three to four months while we work on more um, sort of chronic dysbiosis that they mm. will include maybe a little bit of fish or a little bit of chicken because yeah. they understand that that protein is so important for them and they're trying to the protein sources they usually use are really problematic for their gut at the moment so yeah. there we have that conversation though and I, mm -hmm. I never push people I just I just say look we could do this are you open to this if not mm -hmm. that's totally fine um, and sometimes people will be like, yep, great. I'm happy to do that now. Or they might come back to you in two months when maybe things are plateauing and going, you know what, like maybe I will give that a bit of a go. So yeah, it's, it's education and explaining. And I yeah. find that generally 
things are pretty good. Yeah. And how do you go with getting people to eat fermented food? Because that's sort of when I when I chat to my friends, that's one yeah. of the things that like that's like they're it's alive. I'm not going to eat anything that's alive. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like, but it's so good for you. But that, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's funny to navigate that space. With yeah. Well, I the irony for me is with the chronic gut stuff, we tend to pull people off it to start, and then yeah, we're yeah, getting it yeah. back into their diet. So mm -hmm. um, when we are introducing fermented foods. Um, I generally don't have too many issues yeah, with okay. it, but maybe that's the type of clients we're seeing. And mm -hmm. and also I would say because of our focus on how we present food and talking about recipes, so maybe instead of saying, look, I want you to go and buy some sauerkraut and add it yeah. to meals, it would be, okay, I want you to get this particular sauerkraut and then you're going to make uh, this delicious bread, this buckwheat toast with some avocado yeah. and some like scrambled eggs. And then I want you to put a heat teaspoon of some kraut on it. And it's going to cut, the acid's going to cut through the creaminess of the avocado. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds really yeah. good. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to me at the moment. <laughs> you got to speak the foodie language. Yeah, that's right. Get them to really get excited about what they can yeah. do with it and how they can make it work. That's and that it. Kind of There's stuff. always yeah. a way. So do you guys at your, at JCN, do you do like cooking demonstrations for clients and that sort of stuff, putting on workshops yeah. for like how to cook and how to, you know, how to make these sorts of foods? Like we, um, we were prior mm -hmm. to obviously last year. Um, yeah. yeah, we were doing relatively regular workshops. We actually had a whole heap of them planned just before COVID. So we're rolling <laughs> yeah. out a full year of workshops. Yep. So we're, we're hoping to pick them up again now, but yep. we were doing, a variety of different workshops from teaching people about just basics of macro balance and making mm -hmm. a macro bowl um, through to things to do with maybe like we do online stuff too. So it might be like sprouting and how to sprout. Yeah, um, yeah. I do online ones to do with making your own bread. Um, and we've, the biggest we've done, we've done a couple of, we were doing them each year. They were like a big, dinner or like a luncheon mm -hmm. actually where we would get um people to buy tickets and come along and we'd go to the first few were at the, uh, actually an italian restaurant yeah, and wow. it was like a complete gluten dairy free vegan option italian meal and it was heaps of fun but the last one we did was a luncheon actually at my house in brisbane before we moved and yeah. that was um a full cooking demonstration slash get in with the people like everyone getting in there together and making all of the food and then everyone oh, wow. sat down and yeah it was absolutely fantastic it was probably one of my highlights today mm. it was so much fun it was like a full afternoon um, we had about 20 people there and yeah we just we just taught them how to use all of these different cook up these grains and different ways of roasting vegetables and mm -hmm. just even just basics like how to use different spices and getting people liberal with using olive oil and getting hands on and yeah and obviously being able to sit down around the table and eat that together was pretty magical I guess that's the difference, isn't it? You can just sort of like tell them, but if you actually get them involved yeah. and get them teaching, get their hands into it, it's like it's yeah. a whole other level, isn't it? And oh, then, like, like, then they can yeah. they can eat it. Like, I mean, obviously it's a bit different, but one of the things that I remember is watching a, a Gordon Ramsay thing where he was teaching these bachelors how to cook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like, well, it's so much, you know, and then when they were actually doing it, like, you know, that physical act of doing it, it really gets them involved and they can sort of see, well, it's not this big, scary um, mm -hmm. precipice to climb, hey. That's so true. I even see that like because there's so many recipes we use and, and I'm often referring to recipes on the website and the book for clients. Like some people will easily make that step, but I've definitely seen clients who came along to that um, workshop I was just talking of who learnt recipes that day just from being hands-on that continue mm. to use them to now. They're just, they'll constantly reference them and they would never have, even though I could have told them over and over again to use these particular vegetables to roast or even just to try tempeh or something like that because yep. they tried it that day and they broke down that barrier yeah now they will continue to do it and mm. yeah there's there's nothing like just getting hands on with the food and i guess it's like you said too when you can teach them how they can cut the acid with the cream cheese and you know like yeah. how, how it all combines together and then they yeah. taste it it's like oh wow that's completely yeah. different than i ever thought exactly exactly so 
Do you do also specific nutrition cons uh, consultations? So say if someone came in and they were training for a bodybuilding contest or say if they were doing an Ironman mm -hmm. or say if they were doing, you know, some sort of sporting ac activity where they needed a specific diet, does your, does your clinic do that kind of stuff as well? Yeah, we do. We pretty much do everything in the yep, nutrition yep. space. Exactly. It's just that we have built more of a name on that chronic gut health yep. um, or in that space. But in saying mm -hmm. that, as I'm sure you know, and many of your listeners, like that then ends up relating to everything. So we yeah, end up sure. seeing a lot of chronic immune conditions, fatigue, mental health, hormones. But we do attract um, all walks of life. So mm -hmm. whether it's maybe just some standard weight gain or weight loss or definitely I've had clients over the years who are maybe doing a competition and wanting to um, get lean or cut for that or just yep. wanting to build um, up muscle mass, um, females, males, all, all sorts of spectrums. Um, mm. So, yeah, there's definitely a, a very wide net that we throw and mm -hmm. I do love that. Like I, even though the majority of what we get through now, and particularly for me, is more of these chronic cases, I do love when it's something different along those lines because um, yeah. it's a little it's a little bit more fun in some ways for me to kind of get get a little bit more loose with <laughs> yeah, with ingredients absolutely. with those people and kind of think about things a little bit differently for a while yeah and i guess the other thing that i would sort of ask is how do you as a practitioner broach the subject that sometimes people might think well i've got no money to eat or full organic so i can't so i can't yeah. do this diet or you know I, I this is all i can afford or you know so like how do you sort of broach that where i'm assuming like you teach your clients how to substitute different ingredients if you yeah. you know to work within your budget and and how yeah how do you nav navigate that space i'm i'm actually really well, i'm passionate about a lot of things but i'm yeah, passionate sure. about this because yeah <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of pressure in this space mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I feel like there's a really big divide between people who don't understand the basics of how to eat healthy and what macronutrients are and yeah. understand how to just even eat enough vegetables and fruit in a, in a day. And then there's this other end of this like wellness industry that's just so extreme and there's so much pressure. It's like everything's got to be organic. You've got to yeah. make your own ferments. Like it just goes on and on. And that pressure is just not helpful at all. And I see that with clients all the time. Mm. I just want people to eat good whole food. And if they can't afford to buy organic, then that's okay. Like I'd rather you make up your meat and three veg for dinner and enjoy that and it not stress you out and buy those veggies from Coles or Woolies if that's what works for you yep. rather than go to Macca's drive through <laughs> you know it's just right. like, oh, yeah. let's be realistic and then mm -hmm. if you have the money to afford to buy organic then let's talk about maybe what to buy organic that works for you you know I do you want to go to the source bulk foods or somewhere like that and spend a bit of time buying some organic grains and stocking up your pantry because some people love doing that but other people don't so i think again that comes down to having that time with a client and really understanding mm. their needs and their lifestyle because you can't i in some of the online workshops i i do i talk to other practitioners about this is like you can't you can't force people to do things outside the scope of their lifestyle like you can give someone this perfect dietary plan, but if they don't like cooking and they or they travel a lot or they've got four to five kids and they just need to get mm. into Woolies in and out, like don't expect that person to go to the health food store and buy all their organic grains and then come home and soak their buckwheat and sprout the alfalfa. Like you, you really need to ask people where their line is and yep. then you yep. also, I believe you have to be realistic about what people can afford and mm -hmm. don't make them feel bad yeah, exactly. if they can't afford to go to the farmer's market on the weekend and buy their organic broccoli and brassica veggies um yeah, yeah i just i just think that we have to be a bit more realistic about it it's so much meeting people where they're at hey yeah you know, giving them advice that you know they don't break their bank and they'll actually yeah. stick to that's the other biggest thing isn't yeah, it yeah exactly but yeah exactly well, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. So what, what's on offer with your clinic? What are you guys offering? So you said you've, you've got the, yeah, and where can people find you? Uh, a lot. There's a lot is on offer. Yep, <laughs> so, yep, there's the, sure. so the clinic 
uh, yeah, is based in Brisbane. We have five different practitioners, um, mm-hmm. all nutritionists except for one who's a naturopath. Mm-hmm. So we're, we've got consultations running all the time and we're online as well as in clinic. So we can yep. see clients um, nationally and internationally. So that's, that's constantly our, I guess, number one, but we also offer a lot of online workshops now, um, which has really grown over COVID. Yep. So um, they're offered to the general public for some of the things I've mentioned, but we also uh, offer ones to practitioners and students, mm-hmm. probably more so what I do at the moment, just for like yep. further ed- education around dietary planning and and uh, functional testing and those sorts of things. Mm. Um, there's a JCN Clinic podcast show. So we've been running that for quite a few years now, and that's more for the general public. Just mm-hmm. break it. Like we were just talking about breaking down barriers, being yep. realistic about different spaces, but educating at the same time. Mm. Um, so there's, there's that. And then uh, I also have a cookbook, which I'm generally pretty busy promoting as well that's been yep. out for about a year though now yeah wonderful um so yeah that's sort of the the nutshell of of what's going on at jcn clinic i have other things going on separately <laughs> for mm-hmm. myself um as far as different collaborations and and different things that i'm involved in but yeah yep. jcn clinic that's probably our main hub of what we're doing yeah wonderful so where can they find your podcast and where can they get the, your book from the podcast is a jcn clinic podcast show yep. and it's on uh, your iTunes, Spotify, etc. If people head to the website, all of the information's there. So you'll be able to find the podcast, the books for sale there, also in the clinic. Endeavor Bookstore also has it as well. So oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> and I believe Great. they've got a few signed copies left too. So Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <Good. laughs> in case anyone wants a signed one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a wonderful chat. Uh, yeah, if anyone's in Brisbane or if anyone's around the world and did you, do you do international consults with your We sure do. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. perfect. So, yeah, if anyone's, yeah, around, please get in contact and see what we can do. But other than that, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. No dramas. All right, guys, have a good night and we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Therapist Spotlight. If you would like to know more about ANTA, visit us at www.anta.com.au.